In part two of lesson 31, we're talking about choices again. And the choice we're going to talk about in this piece is the choice you have when it comes to shaft plane. Now, as I said earlier, I'm not a great lover of shaft plane. I didn't only teach the pupils if they want to hit the ball with the shaft. I'm more worried about the body plane and the club head plane. But it seems we're talking about shaft plane, because we've got to, because loads of other pros do, and lots of amateurs uh, get confusion about it. Uh, it's nice to spend a few minutes talking about the shaft plane. So we can use it as a reference point, but for me, it's a very variable reference point. It, it's very, very sort of fluid. If, as a mathematician, I said to you 90 degrees is somewhere between 85 and 95 degrees, well, that's a pretty crude guess. There is 90 degrees in a right angle. And when we talk about shaft plane, to me, we're looking at a variable. The shaft plane is going to vary from club to club. It's going to vary from address to impact. Uh, the journey between address plane and impact plane and the top of the backswing plane is again a variable. Uh, the shaft plane will vary according to the shot you're hitting. If you get a fade, the shaft will stay lower generally. If you get a draw, the shaft plane will rise. So there's a myriad of choices uh, with the shaft plane. But let's talk about the key principles. So I've rested a, a, a board again uh, running from the ball and uh, this is a six iron golf club so I'm just going to rest the six iron in and hopefully you can see from the graphic line the shaft plane. Now essentially when I make a good golf swing I'm going to go from the shaft plane into my biomechanical optimum. You can see that if I draw a line from the butt of the club to the ball that's a much much more upright plane than the one described by the shaft at address. Okay so here's a quarter backswing in plane, here's half a backswing. You can now see that the butt of the club is rising and moving away. Now to a three quarter swing. The, shaft, the butt of the shaft is well above the plane and to the very top. So there's a separation. The club head is actually tracking on the optimum biomechanical plane. If we put a line from the ball through my sternum upwards, I go to the top and the butt of the club will arrive on that line. That's so different from where the shaft plane would be. So if you know the difference between shaft plane and swing plane, you have to ask yourself, well, what sort of journey is it making? Well, the answer is it's making a diagonal journey. The butt of the club is starting on the shaft plane, but is almost immediately rising to the optimum plane. If you make the mistake of staying with the shaft plane, you can see how far below the biomechanical plane I am. So I'm going to show you quarter swing. Quarter wrist, quarter foot and quarter shoulder. That's where the club head would be in the correct plane. Here's half a swing. Half a wrist, half on half a shoulder. Now you can see there's a big difference from where the club head is to where the shaft plane is. So when you go back on the shaft plane, if you stay there, you're in big trouble. So you've got to make a big change. You've got to roll and lift, or you've got to do something complex with your body. So, here's me swinging my biomechanical plane. Shaft plane's way below it. Now, all things being equal, if you had a fade, the shaft is lower than if you had a draw. So, Faldo, for instance, he started off the shaft plane, he went to the top into the biomechanical plane, and he returned to the shaft plane. And then he stood up as he hit the shot, rather like Trevino. So, the Faldo swing was the lead better mechanism and it was essentially, for most of uh, Faldo's career, it was a fade spin mechanism. He's a very tall man. He became the most accurate uh, striker and controller of a golf ball on the planet, but he wasn't the longest. So with sharp plane at address, Faldo went to the optimum biomechanical plane, and he chose to return to the sharp plane. And then as he came through, he would lift his body. So that's the fade spin mechanism. If I was to hit a draw spin shot, into the biomechanical plane, I'm rotating the face, the butt of the club tends to rise, particularly with the driver. So you'll find that the shaft rises. Now basically, when a child rides a bicycle, they wobble in and out of balance. And the angle between the shaft plane and the optimum biomechanical, biomechanical plane, that cone of movement is the choice that you have. If the shaft's down here at impact, you're in the fade spin mechanism swing. If the shaft's higher, you're probably closer to the draw spin. So as long as you know where you are within that cone of movement, you're safe to make the choice. So let me just recap. The shaft is in plane at address. It rises to the biomechanical plane, and if you want to control, you'll return the shaft plane to impact. 
in the power swing, the butt of the club will rise. So there's shaft plane at address and there's shaft plane at impact. There's a few degrees of choice there. Here's the fade spin end of the spectrum and there's the draw spin. Now you're informed about the difference, you can make the choice.